What's up Hunters, bringing you another guide, but this time, instead of a weapon, I'll be covering the new Clutch Claw mechanics in a general sense, as it's an important tool that some are perhaps not sure how to fully use to the best of the scenario, or are just doing it plain wrong. And Clutch Claw plays a vital role in multiplayer hunts, so coordinating right is essential. If you guys want to do multiplayer hunts, I'm streaming Iceborne at twitch.tv slash projectwar almost every day at 8pm EST, make sure to stop by and hunt some mons. Now, I won't be covering the individual mechanics for each Clutch Claw move for each specific weapon in this video. If you want that, go check out my weapon master guides for the particular weapons to know all the specifics you need to know in the end screen annotations. More weapon guides to come in the future too, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. But for this video, I'll be covering the general usability of the Clutch Claw that every weapon can equally do. To use the most basic Clutch Claw, you ready it with L2 and then press circle to latch on. The claw shoots out about 10 feet in front of you, so you can even reach and latch on to flying monsters. While latched on, you can move to different spots on the monster's body, but be aware that this requires stamina. If you have zero stamina, you'll fall off and go into the tired animation, so be weary when moving around too much. In addition, if a monster uses an attack with that specific body part you're on, you'll get hit by the attack and fall off. So if you're latched on to the head or body and the monster does a running attack, you'll get hit off. But if you latched on to the tail, you should be able to avoid the hit. So, reposition to different parts of the body if you see an incoming attack. You can also avoid some attacks like Vilkana's Ice AoE Blast by latching onto them when they're flying, so it's also a tool to avoid some lethal attacks. The purpose of clutching is twofold. The first and most important is wounding a monster's body part. What wounding does is, well, it softens that body part up, not only making that body part take more damage, but also makes parts that would normally make you bounce, no longer bounce. Weakness exploit was nerfed, but against a wounded body part, you'll gain back that 50% affinity, and since you wounded the body part, it'll be treated as a weak spot, so you'll gain the full effect of weakness exploit, even if normally the body part wouldn't activate it. So you see, it's very important to wound a monster's body part for maximum damage especially in multiplayer, where everyone should be contributing to wounding all the monster's body parts to make it take more overall damage. Need the tail cut? Wound it first. Need the wings broken? Latch onto the wings and wound it. It's that simple. Now to wound the monster, the basic is you have to be on him with a clutch claw and then simply press triangle to do your weapon attack. Some weapons have fast attacks, but others like the charge blade have really slow ones, so you'll have to strike at the opportune moment as you need to do the entire animation to wound the body part. But with the temporal mantle equipped however, you'll auto dodge most attacks while latched on and stay latched on even after dodging an attack, so it's very handy to use against monsters that are enraged and are attacking often. But everyone's opening attack at the start of the fight should almost always be this clutch claw weapon attack. Strap on rock steady or have earplugs, clutch claw their face, and do your free weapon attack as they roar to start off the battle for more damage. A wounded body part will stay wounded for 90 seconds, so keep that in mind. It is something you and your teammates have to actively reapply throughout a fight. If you see a part that you want to break or cut that's not wounded, or that your teammates might need, clutch claw weapon attack and break that part. But here's where it gets more complicated. First off, there's two categories for wounding, heavy weapons and light weapons, with the weapons within each group in this chart here. After a single weapon attack from a heavy weapon, the monster's body part will be wounded immediately. But for light weapons, you need to do the clutch weapon attack twice. So it's a bit more work for light weapon users to actively keep the monster wounded. However, to compensate for this, light weapons usually will drop singer ammo from their weapon attacks while heavy usually won't. So because this give and take, it's important multiplayer for light and heavy users to do their attacks, as you need the body parts wounded, but also need slinger ammo for the next purpose of the clutch claw. Before that though, there are some cheats for light weapons to wound the body part in one go, and this involves claw attacks. So while clutch to the monster, if we do a claw attack via circle, it'll count as two points of wound damage. It takes 10 points to wound the body part from zero. 
Heavy weapons deal 10 points, while light weapons do 5 points. So, if you claw the monster 3 times, then do a light weapon attack as a finisher, you'll wound the body parts in one go instead of having to do it twice. Or similarly, if you do a claw attack 5 times, you'll also wound the body parts without any weapon attack, although both have their drawbacks. Claw attacks require stamina, so in addition to moving to a body part, claw attacks will exhaust you even more. Not only this, but after 3 or so claw attacks, the monster will become enraged usually. So be cautious about spamming the claw attack unless you purposefully want the monster enraged because you have the agitator skill, which is something many should seriously consider as a contender for damage builds. But despite the negatives, the claw attack will be essential for the next major purpose of the clutch claw, and that is slinger unload. If the monster is not enraged and you're attached to the monster's face, if you have any amount of ammo, you can press R2 to unload all your remaining ammo, which will send the monster running in whatever direction they're facing in for a dozen or so feet. If they're near and facing a wall when you do this, they'll run and hit the wall, dealing a good amount of damage and then fall over, similar to a knockout, giving you and your teammates some free hits in. Against flying monsters, this will send them into the ground automatically even if they're not facing a wall, so very handy in dealing with Rathalos or Kushala, but this too has its drawbacks. Unloading your ammo builds up their enrage status, potentially making them enrage after you knock them down. And like I said, you can't do this mechanic if the monster is already enraged, which you can tell if they are when their eye icon on the map is red. If it's yellow, you're safe to do claw and unload attacks. Unloading, as I said, does waste all your slinger ammo, so you generally want to do this when you have just one ammo left, using the others either from weapon slinger attacks or from just flinching the monster like with piercing ammo or thorn pods. Flash and dunk pods don't do this unload mechanic, they simply fire at the monster but will not make them run. What if the monster is near a wall but not facing it? Well, the clutch claw attack, if attached to the head, and again, not enraged, can change the direction of the monster via the claw attack, usually turning to the left. As mentioned earlier, it takes 3 claw attacks to enrage a monster, so you can rotate the monster 180 degrees at most. So before even thinking of doing this, make sure the monster is close enough to the wall and facing a beneficial direction so you don't have to do too many claw attacks to make them face the wall. And to wrap it up, the last thing I'll mention is the new flinch animation. When a monster does this animation, usually drooling and just looking at you, this is your chance to clutch claw them. You can even clutch claw with your weapon out, so if the monster is not wounded, do this to reapply the wound status on the monster's body part for free. Secret tech is that they'll stay in this animation for about 3 to 5 seconds. So, if you delay your clutch claw grab for about 2 to 3 seconds, you'll extend the time they're in this animation, which provides more time for your teammates to get some damage in. Likewise, the claw attacks to the head that change the monster's direction, you can delay the next use of the claw attack for a second to let your teammates pummel the monster more. Speaking of team, do your part. A good team is going to have the whole monster wounded and likewise, if someone is attached to the head, don't grapple onto the head too and start doing a claw or slinger unload. They might be doing the same and you'll just add more enrage meter to the monster or mess up a potential slinger unload. So be careful, take turns. Also, if two people are on the same body part, the first person to do a weapon attack stays on and the other falls off. So switch to another body part quickly if you want to still wound some part of the monster. Similarly, if the monster is already wounded, don't spam clutch claw over and over. Those attacks are usually doing mediocre damage, so it's better to contribute more damage from your normal weapon attacks until you need to re-wound it. The exception is flying monsters. Clutch claw the hell out of those birds. Also, if someone is mounted on a monster, try to clutch claw and break all the various parts of the monster before they get knocked down. That way, you and your teammates will contribute maximum damage. Okay, one more thing. When a monster is almost dead and limping away, try to always clutch claw attached to them. Generally, they'll be so slow that if you clutch claw and move to the head and do a weapon attack, by the time you recover the animation, you can roll towards them and hopefully clutch claw yet again and keep attacking them until nearly their nest. 
Alternatively, if they're not an Elder Dragon, move to their face, claw attack them towards a wall, and unload your load on their face. This is great for capturing monsters limping away to sleep, provided they're not in rage. But hopefully now you understand the Clutch Claw mechanic in greater detail. Again, weapons have more various ways of Slinger and Clutch Claw use, so take advantage of them. But that is all from me, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have the master guides for Longsword and Hammer in the end screen annotations. Greatsword is the next guide I'll make, so smash that like button, comment down below what you guys think of the new Clutch Claw mechanics, I personally love them, and yeah, subscribe for more Monhan Epicness.